Hey guys, hope you're doing good. I am Nivya and today I'm going to speak about three real stories of child abuse. The victims themselves have written uh, books related to the experiences that they have uh, gone through uh, related to child abuse. So I'm going to specifically speak about the stories. I'm not going to review the books at all. It's just that I'm giving you a summary of what has gone in their life. Uh, this video might go a bit lengthy because I'm sharing three different stories but uh, please bear with me because I'll try to make it as short as possible but I really do not want to miss any important points. So without any further ado, let's start with the first story. The first story is about three girls named Christina, Juliana and Celeste. They've written this particular book uh, named Not Without My Sister. I'll give the details of this book in the description box if in case you want to buy it and read it. Uh, so these three girls have gone through abuse in like emotionally, physically, mentally and sexually. Uh, systematically they were being harassed at a very young age itself. Why? Because their parents were part of a community, uh, a communal organization named Children of God. Like you generally say that I'm born to that particular religion. Why? Because my parents are basically following that particular religion. Similarly, their parents were practicing uh, the rules and laws that were being uh, told by the Children of God and hence the children, these three kids were also uh, supposed to uh, do all uh, what was being told uh, by this organization. I'll explain you what Children of God is and what ridiculous pathetic uh, laws that they had. For example, uh, pedophilia and incest were just uh, so acceptable in that organization. More than acceptable, it was something that they were supposed to do. It means at a very young age, so the kids were being pushed to have uh, sex with old aged guys. And uh, they had a particular you know, reason for this as well. They call it law of love. Means uh, what they're saying is God is love and love is sex. So uh, the most divine form of you know showing, expressing love is through sex. So sharing your body with someone is the best thing that you can do. That's what they stated. I mean, seriously, so ridiculous. Uh, and if you know at all uh, the young girls or anyone basically were reluctant to do all of this, what was being told uh, by this particular embodiment, they used to be beaten left and right. They had a reason for this as well. They used to tell that uh, Jesus Christ had suffered a lot. Uh, he was also being beaten a lot. And why was he beaten? Because he was ready to you know, sacrifice his life for you. So he suffered for you. So why don't you suffer? So just get beaten. It's okay. That's what they stated. I mean, it's okay to be violent. It's okay to just have sex at young age. Everything was just normal and supposed to be kind uh, of done that is what they used to follow i mean really ridiculous uh, this particular organization was formed in 1968 by a person named david berg and i think he's a psycho i really don't know what to call him i mean he, what he used to do is he is the one who uh, founded it who was also called as a father of uh, this particular organization children of god he is the one who formulated the particular laws and rules of uh, the organization and he used to never communicate with uh, his devotees uh, straight to straight like on face rather what he used to do is he used to write letters to uh, the devotees and they used to just follow them blindly I mean, the followers are also definitely psychos I mean how can you just let your own children you know follow all these things right I mean it's really ridiculous and uh, so uh, there were letters being written to uh, the uh, devotees stating a lot of things like this is one lord do this do that all of that and which were really pathetic for example uh, majority of the times this guy used to write letters stating that uh, he wants uh, the young girls uh, to dance uh, in, uh, uh, without any dress i mean naked uh, and send him over the videos because he wanted to get entertained and according to uh, them you know if you are basically you know you're uh, uh, giving your body to someone that is the best thing you can do right so then children i mean the parents also fo force their children to do it because they believe that is the most right thing they can do and i was very shocked i mean for me it was very new uh, i don't know whether it's new for you as well this particular organization children of god did exist in India as well. I mean, in Bombay, uh, there were a lot of people who used to follow this. And uh, they, they are basically hippies. So they used to come from one country and then move to another country. For example, they came from America and then settled in India, Bombay, especially Bombay, uh, and then uh, started following the practice here. But thankfully, because pedophilia 
India was illegal or is illegal in India, uh, the government once they found that these things are happening down here, they uh, sent this entire people, like they asked them to move out from India. They gave a specific time period and they said like, you should just move out of uh, India. And then they moved to Philippines. So they just keep, kept moving from one uh, region to another. And uh, so basically we can say uh, they are hippies because they kept moving from one place to another following rubbish rules. Like uh, the rules uh, which even stated that you know birth control is a sin according to uh, them as many children as possible should be uh, allowed to uh, live. That's what their concept was. <laughs> I mean what to say right? I mean equally the person who formulated these rules as well as the people who blindly followed this they all are should, should be like psychos. That's what I can just tell. I mean it's just feelings that are coming from my side. I don't know how to you know put it forward like uh, other than this way and yeah so now coming back to uh, the story of these three girls Christina, Juliana and Celeste they uh, they were parted from each other at a very young age itself because their parents uh, parted away from each other at a very uh, early age so Christina moved with his uh, moved with her mother whereas uh, the other children moved with uh, their father so thankfully her mother uh, Christina uh, or these kids mother uh, at one point of time felt that things are not going right. This particular organization is not what she's actually looking for. I mean, she understood that it's not right. And so she got separated from this particular organization and hence Christina was saved. I mean, she was also uh, able to come out of this organization. Now, Christina wanted to save her siblings, you know, from uh, this organization, just like she is now free. So she was able to help Celeste also to come out of this organization. However, uh, they were actually four uh, siblings. One particular girl who was there, Davida, she had to commit suicide because of the abuse that she was going through. And it was with this particular uh, incident that uh, uh, she giving her life away that the next sister named Juliana felt that it's high time even she needs to uh, lead the organization and hence these uh, three siblings then just reunite later and then they uh, came up with this particular book in order to explain uh, and just share the experience how bad their experience was uh, with the world just like these three girls and there are a lot of girls who came out of this organization and then filed case against both David Berg and this organization uh, stating the abuse that you know children are going through and the worst thing I mean I don't know exactly like when I checked uh, uh, in Google and many other sites I see that even now this particular organization exists though we don't know whether the rules are changed or not uh, and in which parts of uh, the world exactly it is being still there uh, but yeah it is still there uh, if in case you want to know more about children of God in fact, uh, earlier, let me just explain this first. Earlier, this particular organization was called as Teens of Christ. Later, they renamed it to Children of God. And then now they call it as uh, the Family International or also as the Cult. So if, in case you want to know more about this particular organization, you can watch the video in, uh, on Netflix. I'll give you the dis uh, link of it in the description box. I have not watched this video. I, I mean after reading this book itself I, I was very gloomy and I felt really disturbed so I didn't have that level you know of uh, mind to go ahead and watch the video as well but if in case you prefer videos over books then probably you can watch the video on Netflix and let me know how it uh, is because I really don't know how that particular video is but otherwise if you like reading books you can definitely read this book which again I'll put in the description box with uh, the details. Alright now let's move to the second story. The next story that I'm going to speak about is a child named Dave Pelzer and he wrote this particular book named A Child Called It. So as you can see that it word generally you refer to uh, as a, an animal or a thing as it because if it's person we generally refer to as him or her but his own mother used to refer him as an it. So uh, the villain in this particular story is none other than Dave Pelzer's own mother. Until he was four years old, everything seemed to be okay. Like they had a very loving family. Like he uh, had his uh, parents, his uh, brother. Everything was going so well. But at the age of four, uh, at the age of four, you should understand, it's so young, uh, he felt that there's something different. Like something was happening to his mother. He 
saw her being alcoholic and all of a sudden she started enjoying uh, Dave suffering from pain. Means uh, she always wanted to beat him, smash him and the things that she did to him is really scary. I mean it's really difficult to say as well. Uh, she used to keep Dave's hand on a uh, stub bur and burn it. Like his entire uh, hand was burned uh, keeping on stuff by his own mother and uh, she used to smash his head uh, over a mirror and make him uh, continuously tell that I'm a bad boy, I'm a bad boy and uh, she used to put him to starve, she used to not give him food for around 4 to 5 days and at times even a week and uh, she used to basically make him have his own vomit, like she used to make him eat his own vomit as well. So this kid did not have any food to eat. So what he used to do was, uh, every time uh, like after dinner, he was the one who uh, was supposed to uh, clean the utensils. Apart from uh, cleaning the utensils, every uh, work, like all the uh, daily chores were done by him itself or he was supposed to do it at a very young age itself. So after uh, cleaning the utensils, there would be bits and pieces uh, of food items uh, on the plate, right? So he used to have those, like whatever is remaining. And so his mother uh, one day noticed and noticed it and told him to put all of them into a waste bin and not to have them. So what he has to do is he has to ha have these food particles, whatever is there in the waste bin. I mean, from the waste bin, uh, he used to have them. So his mother noticed this again that he is having it from the waste bin, which she again did not like. So what she did not like it because he is having food, not that he is having it from garbage bag or whatever. She is not sad. She's like. You know, she's sad for the fact that he is able to get food in one of the other ways. So what she did is she put ammonia in waste in the waste bin so that you know when he eats the food, uh, his throat basically burns. So if you even inhale ammonia, you get an irritation, like sense of irritation. So if you intake it, if you have it, you, it, it will really burn your body. Especially he is very young, so. He, he used to really suffer uh, and uh, he used to be put into a bathroom and then she uh, used to f just pour ammonia inside the bathroom and close the door so that he inhales it and uh, he just becomes weak. She used to gain happiness out of doing it and uh, even though she he uh, had a brother, he she, she was never you know focusing on his uh, brother. It's called as target child selection uh, as per psychology. So, just her target is just one child and that is uh, Dave. So she just feels so happy when he is being hurt. Now the question even you would have is like where is his father? Is he away from them or what exactly it is? No, he is in the same home and uh, he, is, he, he, he is not like the mother. Like uh, he used to not attack him in any way or he was not abusive. In fact, he used to speak against it like to his wife he used to tell like this is wrong and we used to fight but what he saw it or observed is that the day he fights with his wife you know uh, speaking about this particular subject she used to hurt the child even more so husband thought basically it is better to stay away from this so that it doesn't go worse and at one point he couldn't take it anymore so he just left his home. I mean, he just separated from his wife and went, but we really hoped that he took Dave also along with him, but he did not. So uh, this all went through and thankfully, uh, at the age of 14, uh, her, the Dave's uh, teachers in school basically found that he had a lot of wounds uh, over his body. And so his teachers uh, along with the principal came to his home and then identified that the situation is not just going right. And then uh, they took him uh, away and uh, foster parents were basically you know given to him now at that particular uh, time like 1970 there was no child uh, protective service so uh, it was very risky for the teachers or principal as well in order to you know take a step and then save the child but thankfully there were an like angels uh, for this particular child and uh, in at the age of 18 uh, Dave Pelzer joined US Army Force so that's about Dave Pelzer. Now let's go to the third story. Speaking about the third book, the third book is about a guy named Peter Roche and the book's name is Unloved. So if you can see the front cover uh, or for this particular book, uh, it's, it's not a happy picture, right? Your heart will be melting or it's, it's a miserable condition of a child. 
So what you're exactly feeling right now is what the person who photographed this particular picture also wanted. This particular picture was being taken by NSPCC, that is National uh, Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Children. Uh, so as the name suggests, you would basically think that you know they would have held this uh, child uh, by taking this photograph. You know they would have uh, gained money and then you know held him out. But no, they did gain money. They got a lot of fun because of this particular photograph. I mean, they advertised uh, their entire organization using this particular picture, but they did not give a single penny to uh, him or his family. So, uh, I mean, in the initial pa uh, pages itself, it's mentioned also, this kid still remembers when this particular photo was being taken. The lady there stated that you are going to be a star one day. I mean, if she meant that many people would recognize you by this picture, then probably she was successful. It, it, did like uh, reach out to a lot of people but did it really help this guy in any way then she's completely wrong no it was not at all of any use so the story about um, Peter is that uh, his parents both mother and father were very abusive and they had almost 10 children or so and then the pattern in their family was that the youngest child so uh, if it's a guy okay only if it's a guy and the youngest child used to be always stabbed and hit so if the first child is a guy then they hit him i mean the parents used to hit him the second if it's a girl they still hit the first guy so they uh, thankfully did not touch the girls don't know why especially generally we uh, hear that you know girls uh, go through a lot of abuse but in this case they used to not do uh, any harm towards their girls rather it's all uh, restricted to the guys in their family so that was the way and then if third uh, kid is again a guy then they used to not stab uh, the first guy they stopped it and they used to go the attention you know the abuse was going to the third child and the first child will also hit the third child that's the way it used to be so the brothers used to ideally hit the youngest child and the youngest child was Peter in this case so at one point there were a lot of brothers the family entire family used to hit him and they used to have fun and that used to be a daily you know systematic course i mean a habit for them and uh, he was very uh, i mean he was beaten all the time and he used to st like put in they were very poor actually so they didn't have much of food or money as well and so he used to starve for like many days like a week or even more and uh, searching for food, he used to also have food from garbage, so he used to go outside and search for food from waste bins and all of that. And one day he did not even return to his home uh, because he just slept, you know, somewhere else outside where he got food. And his parents did not even know it, that he did not return. I mean, he is very young, very, very young, and still, you know, his parents never cared whether he is back or not. In fact, this kid used to go to school with the same dress that he. Uh, peed on means while he was sleeping uh, he used to uh, pee because he was very young very young that you know he used to pee on his own dress and then they did not even change his dress he used to go with the same dress to uh, the school and because of which he did not have any friends obviously the other children were reluctant to uh, be friends with him but the question here is now why teachers did not understand I mean generally you should understand right I mean Children cannot be bad like at that young age, so they cannot be unclean until and unless their parents don't keep them tidy. So they should have basically checked it all but then the teachers also did not like him because he used to be late. He used to be actually late because he is doing a lot of work at home which they never cared about or he definitely lied as well stating that you know because of different other reasons I'm late and all that but they should have checked but they really hated him as well because he was very unclean. Uh, so uh, there was just one teacher who basically you know had sympathy and empathy and all of that to him but then it really did not help him and because his child was always put into star he did not have any food he started doing petty crimes at a very young age itself and he was caught he was being put into juvenile and later after he came out of juvenile he thankfully at a later stage uh, became a very decent guy and uh, right now he's a, a father of four children and he really takes care of these four children very well because he knows what he has gone through and he really doesn't want any other child to go through what he has gone so that's her story in fact no children like no child in this particular world should go through any of the experiences that uh, these uh, kids that i spoke about in these three uh, stories went through it's really sad and uh, 
you all can definitely read this book if you have a strong heart. It was very difficult for me because all these books were equally difficult for me to read. I still remember when I read A Child Call It. I used to read one page and then stop and then you know just take a long like break, breathe because it was very difficult to read it at one stretch it's very disheartening as well but yeah you guys can definitely uh, try reading this book I hope that you know uh, child abuse just comes to an end we don't know like psychological uh, issue whoever are having uh, issues related to psychological and I mean they, they all should be treated somehow there should be an end to all this that's what I basically wanted to uh, state Alright, so if you have liked this video, then please do uh, like, share, comment and subscribe my channel so that you get to uh, know the next videos when I put in, so that you can watch them as well. Until we meet next time, this is Nivya signing off. Take care, happy reading, bye.